We call the process of populating that table learning, and switches that perform this type of operation a learning switch. So let's see how a learning switch works. Let's suppose that host A wants to send a frame to destination C. Well, this frame has both a source MAC address and a destination MAC address. Initially, the switch has an empty forwarding table. But when it sees this packet arrive, it knows because of the source MAC address on this frame that the host with MAC address A is connected to port 1. This piece of information allows the switch to begin to populate its forwarding table. So because it sees a packet that originated from A coming in on port 1, it knows that future frames that are destined for A can be sent out port 1. Similarly, when C replies, the switch will see a frame with the source MAC address of C arriving on input port 3. So it knows in the future that when frames are destined for MAC address C, it no longer needs to flood them out every port, but can simply forward the frame out the output port C. So in summary, if the switch has no entry in the forwarding table, then it floods the frame out every output port, except, of course, the port on which the packet arrived. Otherwise, if an entry exists in the switch's forwarding table, it sends the frame only on the output port corresponding to the destination. Now, you should notice that, of course, flooding is still sometimes necessary. If there's no entry in the forwarding table, the switch needs to flood. And also, there are broadcast frames, such as ARP queries. Now, flooding can lead to forwarding loops and broadcast storms. Suppose we have a LAN with two switches, and the underlying topology forms a loop, as shown. Now, in this case, if a host on the upper portion of the LAN sends a packet to the switch that's a broadcast packet, the switch will, of course, broadcast the packet on its other output port, which will then be heard on the input port of the other switch. This switch will, in turn, broadcast the packet on its output ports, and now we have a loop. Therefore, if the network contains cycles of switches, then flooding can lead to these types of forwarding loops. Now, these types of cycles in the underlying topology can happen accidentally, but they might also be there by design for higher reliability. You might want this kind of underlying topology because if a particular link were to fail, you'd want the underlying topology to remain connected. So we need to create a solution whereby forwarding on an underlying topology that includes cycles does not result in forwarding loops and broadcast storms.